Now that it's Christmas time and uh, Christmas is right around the corner, the discussion in Christian circles surrounds Santa Claus. Should Christians celebrate Santa? Should Christians avoid Santa? Should Christians kind of sprinkle Santa in some aspects and avoid him in others? You know, what should Christians do with Santa Claus? So in today's video, guys, we'll discuss those questions and dive deeper into it. And there's really three things that I kind of want to circle around. One being, you know, if you tell your kids that Santa Claus is real, and he comes down and he puts the presents on the tree, he eats the cookies, he gives his reindeer the carrots. You know, when your kids find out or, or your kid finds out that Santa Claus isn't real, does that then make them have no belief in then God? Does that make them question God's existence? Um, um, to me, this, this argument is actually very weak in the Christian circle. I know a lot of Christians will bring this up. Because it sounds like, oh yeah, that, that makes sense, you know. But in reality, guys, um, your faith in God should look drastically different than belief in Santa Claus. Um, and if it's not, then you have shallow faith. And if you do uh, question the existence of God because Santa Claus isn't real and your parents told you Santa Claus was real, um, then your faith was shallow and your faith was was not faith that saves. And so with that being said, um, I think it's a poor argument. I think a person's faith in God is drastically different than a person's belief in Santa Claus. No matter how much you believe that Santa Claus is real, um, your faith in God should be drastically different and come to no comparison at all with that. Now, the one thing that I do uh, really line up with that I don't like about Santa Claus and the reason why uh, my wife and I avoid Santa Claus really in all aspects is because of what is kind of the teachings of Santa Claus. And the teachings of Santa Claus are, you know, if you're good, then you get gifts. And if you're bad, then you don't get gifts. And um, then all of a sudden you have kids who get iPads and electric bikes and awesome cool toys and then you have other kids who get maybe some clothes and and, and maybe a toothbrush you know or, or maybe kids don't really get much of anything and so then you kids go to school and kids are hanging out with friends and they're all talking about their toys and what they got and it becomes this like comparison thing and and it doesn't bode well with kids mentally in that state well, why did Santa give them that? But I didn't get one of those. Well, I put this on my Christmas list, but Santa Claus didn't bring me this. You know, it, it's, I thought I was good. Was I not good? Am I not deserving of this? And interesting enough, the greatest gift of all time is given freely. Not according to our good works, not according to uh, how well we do throughout the year, especially during Christmas time. Oh, this free gift of salvation is freely given by the Lord to those who repent of their sins and put their faith in God and believe that he died and rose again for the sins of the world. It, your good works to the Lord are like filthy rags. And so we don't, do good in order to earn salvation. We don't do good in order to uh, look good in the eyes of the Lord. No, it's freely given to sinners because we aren't good in the eyes of the Lord. We can't do enough good things to earn anything from the Lord. And so this is the big thing that kind of turns me away from the Santa Claus um, practice is the lie that in order to get something, you have to be good. Yes, Christians, as you are saved and you go through the sanctification process, you live a life uh, that honors the Lord, and but you still sin, you still fall short, you know, you, you still miss it. But you're continuing to strive to live a life 
um, holy and righteous uh, unto the Lord for his glory alone. Not because you're trying to look good on your own or, or you're trying to look a certain way in front of others, but just because you love the Lord and you want to you wanna honor him. And so, yeah, that, that process will come. And then the, the last thing that seems to happen that I have an issue with as well is Christmas time and Santa Claus, especially Santa Claus, seems to replace what Christmas is actually about. Now, the argument always comes up, well, was, was Christ actually born on this day? You know, it's a pagan holiday, whatever. I mean, like, all these things come up. Guys, it's not about the exact day when, when Christ was born. This is about just celebrating the birth of Christ because he is the savior of the world. And there is joy to be celebrated with that. And, he, and God came down in, in, in human flesh and walked this life and did this life and all of those things for sinners to give us the ultimate lamb sacrifice of Christ on the cross. And so we then turn this into Santa Claus and Santa Claus replaces Christ. And then Christ seems to be kind of put on the back burner of a lot of homes. A lot of Christian homes uh, who do celebrate Santa Claus um, will, will tend to just kind of ignore Christ. Yeah, they'll bring him up occasionally. Oh yeah, well, let's do this for Christ. But the centering and the joy that the kids come and have is around Santa Claus, not Christ. And so in my wife and I's home, we want Christmas to be about what it should be about. And that is our savior of the world being born into this world, brought into this world. And the hope that we have to look forward to um, come Easter when he was nailed to the cross and then rose again on the third day.